Hey there folks, it's Autumn from the blog of traditionallife.com and in this video I want to show you how to pickle asparagus spears. This in our area is the very first thing that we can preserve and put up in the canner and so I love to do it every spring if at all possible and it's just a delicious way to mark the beginning of the season and it always gets my blood pumping in my veins and gets me excited for canning season. So come along and I'm going to walk you through harvesting it from our patch, how to store it. So if you're harvesting it from your own uh, asparagus patch, you're not going to get enough for canning all at once unless you have a massive patch. So I'm going to show you how to store it and keep it crisp and fresh in the fridge. And then I'll show you how to preserve it up in a water bath canner. To harvest your asparagus for canning, you're just going to collect over the course of a couple days and cut off the stalks at ground level. Now these can be stored very easily in the refrigerator if you put them in a container with some water so that they can have some moisture, they will stay firm and crisp for a week or more. Once you have collected enough asparagus, you're going to prepare for canning by measuring in your vinegar and water to create your brine for pickling. I also like to add a tiny bit of honey just to take some of the edge off the acidity and the tang of your pickles, but it's totally optional. You don't have to do this. I just like to do a tiny bit in my brine. And then we also need to get our water bath canner filled and ready to go. So that is warming on the stove. And with your brine warming and your, your canner, it's time to fill your jars. So here I am putting a teaspoon of salt in each jar. You can put this directly into your brine if you want. I don't know why I like doing it this way, but I just pop a teaspoon of salt into each jar and then it is ready for asparagus. I want to very quickly mention the jar size I am using for canning my pickled asparagus. This is a 750 ml jar, so it's between a quart and a pint size, but I like how tall they are. They make it so that you can preserve up the most long, beautiful, slender stalks of asparagus without having to chop everything down to small pieces. And they're great also for pickling beans, garlic scapes, or sometimes I even just preserve juice in them. So I will throw a link down below where you can buy some of these. I love having them. I actually keep them on hand, just a collection of a dozen or so, just for doing asparagus. So that's the size you're seeing me use in this video. To fill our jars, we're just gonna take one stalk of asparagus and kind of use it as our measuring pole for the rest of the asparaguses. Because you don't want to fill your jars too full. You don't want the tops of your asparagus hitting your canning lid. You want to make sure they're down by a quarter to a half inch from the top of your jar. So you simply cut them to size, stuff your jar, and when your jar no longer rattles, when you shake it, when the asparagus is closely packed enough in there that that is the case, it's good and you can move on to filling the next jar. Working from the tip back with measuring your asparagus is a great way to go because it gets rid of the tough ends. The base of asparagus often can be uh, woody and tough. And so this is just a way to make sure you have tender edible asparaguses in your jar. So you just keep stuffing and filling. This is the part that takes the longest. But once this is done, you are ready to go. Some people wonder, can we use those tough asparagus ends? You can absolutely go through, bend them, and where they naturally snap, that is where your tender and your tough parts meet. So yes, you can use them, um, but with these ones, we're gonna be feeding them to uh, livestock. The tough ends is a good way to go, great way to use it up, or you can even just throw them in your compost pile some people cook them down and make asparagus soup, cream of asparagus soup, which I can't advise you on because I've actually never done. But that is an option for those of you who are concerned about waste. Once your jars have all been filled, it's time to bring your boiling hot brine over 
and using a funnel, you just fill your jars to about a quarter inch from the top of your jar. Ladling this hot stuff over the asparagus, you want to be careful not to burn yourself. But once your jar is full, you simply wipe the rim and then fasten your lid into place. This goes straight into your hot water bath canner where it will stay warm until all the jars have been filled and they are all ready to be processed at the same time. Canner filled. Put your lid on and you turn it up to a boil. I want to take a break from this video to tell you about my canning course for beginners. If you are new to this idea of home canning but you would like to learn, my course is designed specifically for beginners and it will walk you through safe practices for preserving food in your own kitchen. You will learn how to pickle a variety of vegetables, how to preserve fruits in a syrup. I will teach you how to make applesauce, apple butter, homemade jams, low sugar jams, and jellies. And I will also teach you how to preserve up tomato products, things like home canned salsa, tomatoes in a water, how to make tomato juice, tomato sauce. My course will get you started on preserving food to feed your family this year. There's a link down below. You can go check it out to buy the course and get started with home canning in your kitchen today. After your asparagus has been processed as per your altitude, which I will link to the recipe down below where you can get it over on the blog. For me, it's a little longer than a lot of people because I live at a higher altitude, but here we just pull the jars out and put them on a firm and sturdy rack that's not going to tip over when we put hot jars on it and we will let them cool for at least 12 hours before we then go remove the bands and put them in storage beautiful jars of asparagus these will be such a tasty treat at a special meal after your jars are cooled to room temperature generally you want to leave them for at least 12 hours then it's time to test them for a seal, and then we remove the bands. These will actually rust in storage if you leave them on because there's water trapped between the jars, rings, and your bands. So you wanna take them off. If you have a jar that hasn't sealed, it can go to the refrigerator and be used up in the next month or so. But I was lucky, all these sealed. And so I'm gonna go put them first, first canning of the year, into my canning room shelves. Now you can see I have some older canning there from last year, but this is the fresh stuff, so we're gonna start on the left and fill her in going to the right as the year progresses. All right, folks, thank you for joining me. If you have comments or questions, feel free to leave them below, and you can also pop down there and check out links to any of the resources that I mentioned in this video. Thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.